Okay, ready? Welcome to Cinema Q, where we chat all things film and faith through our lens as storytellers and as a creative married duo. I'm Ian McHugh, filmmaker, actor, and writer with over 10 years in the industry. And I'm India, photographer and actress. Together we discuss the art of filmmaking and review what we're watching, all to discover what should go next in your Cinema Q. Let's do it. Let's go. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Cinema Q. My name is Ian McHugh, and today I get to bring you my first kernel. Running solo right now on these shorter, non-spoiler episodes. We um, usually do them by ourselves, just India or just me. And that is because it's usually on a show that just one of us has watched and not the other one. So I am sorry that I didn't commit more to dressing up for this one because I should have. Because this is just one of my favorites of all time. So spoiler on how good I think it is and whether I recommend you should watch it or not. Um, But instead of dressing up like the Peaky Blinders do, uh, I poured some bourbon, poured some whiskey. Um, This is 1792 and I have this one out here right now because I have a good friend named Brian Hazen who I genuinely should have brought on this episode and asked him to be on it with me because we kind of watched it together and this is one of his favorites it's a little fancier version than what i have right now but in honor of the peaky blinders i do have this with me today so here's to them Mm. that is good man that is good and so yeah, sorry I don't have the cap on, razor in it and all that, but um, hopefully this is enough for you as I talk about Peaky Blinders. So I've been so excited to talk about this series for so long. I believe it started in 2012 and just came to a close on the TV series side of it in 2022. So the last season, part two, just came out um, last year and it was phenomenal. So 2013 to 2022. And Oh, I'm so excited because we're ending it with a feature film and I think that's going to be perfect. Like, how do you end such an epic series? So those of you who haven't heard about the Peaky Blinders and it's kind of a weird name. It's like Peaky Blinders. What even is that? So it is a gangster family epic set in the 1900s, um, England, and it centers on a gang who sew razor blades into the peaks of their caps. Um, so they can blind people in fights when they don't aren't allowed to have weapons in places. And so that's what Peaky Blinders comes from. And they are led by their boss, Thomas Shelby. So the Peaky Blinders uh, is kind of like a family-run business, gangsters, all of that, the Shelby family. And the younger brother, Thomas Shelby, is played by Killian Murphy. And I tell you what, he is one of my all-time favorite actors. And partially thanks to this episode... Uh, or to this TV series, like he is phenomenal. Even though his name is Kill Ian, I don't know how I feel about that, but Killian Murphy does an outstanding performance in this. It is so difficult to do period pieces. It is so difficult to switch accents. Um, and the way that he embodies this character consistently that is just mentally going through so much, physically going through so much, emotionally going through so much. Again, no spoilers. Uh, it's, it's just so beautiful to see him alongside the cast that he has to create this world that's based on a true story of the actual Shelby family back in the 1900s in England. And so would I recommend The Peaky Blinders? Absolutely. And so to start off this, I'm going to start talking about some of my scorings um, to kind of help, you know, without a conversation partner, it, it kind of helps us get in the flow of what we're talking about today. So for family friendly, no, zero, negative. Like <laughs> this is this is hard to watch. And so I would recommend watching it with someone. There's very strong violence, very strong, very strong language. And there's nudity, there's things like that. So like have accountability when you watch this and don't binge it. It is it is a tough watch, but it is honest, it is real. And I appreciate about that. Like I, pre- I appreciate that about it. It is honest to the time and the people and it's just it it just brings you into the world that the Beaky Blinders are in and it's oh it's hard to watch but it is so good I say hard to watch meaning like there's a lot of stuff that I'm just like oh I want to turn away and I want to but like all of it adds so honestly to the story that like 
it it enhances the story uh just amazingly with with the choices that they make and of course i wish that you know some of that stuff wasn't in it and is it all necessary no but if you're able to watch something like this watch something like this like watch the peaky blinders it is so good um so family friendly zero do not watch it with your family watch it with friends be an adult like be 18 at least um but as far as cinematography goes i do tell people that this is one of the most beautifully shot tv shows i've ever seen and it's not really big on like cgi it has a ton of practicals it has like the world that it creates um and of course there's some cgi to make it it's a period piece right you gotta have you know the world building and all of that but gosh it is so beautiful and they use a lot of like telephoto lenses they zoom in a lot of things are blurry um, in the background, they have a really like kind of macro, micro focus on on a lot of things, and it kind of makes it disorienting. Like it's shallow depth of field, you know. Like pe- it's really zoomed in and crisp on one spot and just blurry around it. And they use that um, very well. I don't think it's overdone. It's unique for a TV show, and I, I just love the cinematography. The colors are beautiful. The set design is beautiful. The costumes are amazing. Like the cinematography overall, the editing, the speed, the pace is stunning. I mean, when they choose to use slow-mo, there's action sequences. Like, it is probably, like, if I could give something a 10 for a TV show, I'm close to it with this one. Um, I do give I do give cinematography a 9.5. I could probably rank it even higher. Uh, but I know I, I have a high, high standard. So that's, that's incredible for me. Like, this is probably my favorite. I don't think I'd rank anything higher than it on the cinematography scale for, um, yeah, a TV show. It's maybe a movie or something, but the the world building, the way that the camera uh, complements the emotion of all the characters and the absolute like crazy life that they all go through, is is just beautifully partnered in this in this series. So, to that, I will take a drink to the Peaky Blinders. Acting. Oh, acting. Again, I think Killian Murphy is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, it is so good. Like, he is one of those actors that just inspires me to also want to act and become very, very good at it. From the dialect to the accents to the, um, like, the uh, the emotional roller coaster this guy goes on. Again, I don't think that's a spoiler because, like, I hope that main characters go through emotional roller coasters in series. Um, it is just so beautifully done. And then he is just surrounded by an entourage of, of fellow actors that, I mean, just, again, one of my other favorites, Tom Hardy, he's in it, it like enough said. And, and some of the um, other people, uh, his older brother, Arthur Shelby, is played by Paul Anderson. And what a pleasant surprise. I don't remember him from anything else. And so watching him in this was an incredible treat. And then there's other people, um, oh, Helen McRory, uh, rest in peace, but she was so good. Uh, one of my favorites, so heartbroken that she, um, got sick and had passed since, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just the most beautiful ensemble of actors to all enter into this space, into this story and join together to literally make one of my favorite pieces of of cinematic you know masterpiece that i've ever seen so well done to all of them i mean i could go on and on on this list but go watch it the the cast is so so sweet and it's so well done um uh, for depth i actually i i give this oh so for acting i give a 9.8 so 9.9.5 on cinematography 9.8 on acting and for depth so this one's hard because there's a lot of language, a lot of lingo, a lot of, you know, terminology that I don't really understand for the time. I kind of had to watch it with subtitles a lot of the times because the accents were so thick. Um, I didn't understand the the culture of England in the 1900s that as well as I thought I did. And so sometimes it was kind of hard to follow, but I rewatched it quite a few times and quite a few episodes I would rewatch because I didn't want to miss out on the story. And this one goes deep. This is such a deep story. And so I give it a 9.6. The amount of layers that it has and the the family aspect and 
uh, just the family business, to the people around them, to the gangs around them, to governmental systems, to like it, it is so deep and beautiful and the the family depth and the relational depth between the characters. It's I, I just feel like I can watch it again and again and, and catch new things and learn new things and understand things better. And so depth, absolutely. I give it a 9.6. It is deep. So overall for Peaky Blinders, I give it a 9.7. I I think it probably deserves a 10, but I'm just landed on 9.7 because, I mean, to me thus far, no film or series has been like perfect except maybe Lord of the Rings Return of the King. But uh, Peaky Blinders is just one of my favorites. I have rewatched at least the first couple seasons Um multiple times more than almost any other show and the lifestyle is just so funny like you watch it and you just like want to smoke a cigarette and drink some whiskey but um i don't smoke cigarettes and so i guess i'll have some whiskey uh with the peaky blinders so i would absolutely recommend this show like again be careful how you watch it where you watch it who you watch it with um but if you can have somebody that can enjoy it with you like you become just so attached and enthralled with this world that they create based on a true story too so i i say lean in i say watch it i say give it a chance and then get excited because the the finale is still coming out as far as i know i hope i'm not wrong on that i read an article a while ago about it and haven't kept up on it since i watched the you know series episodic finale um last year in 2022 but I ah oh, this ep- this this cinema cube episode is just making me want to watch it again and I may start it again just from the cinematography the beauty the characters the acting the story man it is good y'all so I absolutely recommend to go watch Peaky Blinders it is I think it could top some of the charts for you it's won awards it has done beautifully well I don't think they pushed too hard to reach for story it felt natural and I think that might come off of the fact that it is based off of a true story. Um, But yeah, overall, go see it. Go watch it. It's on Netflix again. Sorry for doing all the Netflix original stuff. But uh, man, I just hope you can sit with it and appreciate this world that they make. And then it also might get you to fall in love with whiskey a little more. So uh, absolutely go watch it. And thank you for watching this, Colonel. If I keep obsessing about Peaky Blinders, I might have to do a popped Colonel. But right now, this is just a non-spoiler Colonel for you guys. To, and to tell you to go queue up Peaky Blinders in your cinema queue. Thanks for listening, y'all. See ya. <laughs>